Hello world, hello YouTube land. Do you like my shirt? Uh, this is about as smart as I would get. I don't normally like wearing shirts for the um, uh, semantical reason really of uh, uh, collar representing um, the collar of a slave and cuffs representing the cuffs of a slave. Obviously with, with a tie you really are a slave. That's why I don't like wearing shirts. But these have got these uh, associations with, with working men, these checker shirts. Uh, I can sort of bear them, although I don't like wearing them all the time. Anyway, enough of that rubbish. Uh, I get to do with you. Uh, this is uh, Star Wars. It's uh, issue number eight by Brian Wood. Uh, the big issue on this one is um, the artwork. I, I hear that a lot of people are talking about the artwork in this one, saying that um, basically that it sucks and it takes away from the story, um, especially the, uh, the facial features of lots of the characters. They're so badly drawn that it's spoiling their fun of the entire book. Uh, the artist of this book was um, what here? a guy called Carlos de Anda. And Carlos de Anda. It was taken away um, two issues ago, and since issue number seven, it's been taken over by a guy called Ryan Kelly. Uh, Ryan Kelly unfortunately has problems with faces. Can't draw them very well. But he can draw ugly faces, so he, he can draw the bad guys. But um, when he's um, drawing the good guys, he tends to draw them a bit horsey. I can uh, show you Luke Skywalker there. In particular, that one with the, with the lightsaber. There we go. It's, it's just not very good at drawing um, attractive um, male faces. He, he draws Han Solo in an um, in, um, almost identical way as well. Han Solo also looks horsey. He looks nothing like Harrison Ford, and Luke Skywalker looks uh, nothing like. Mark Hamill, even um, Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia, uh, the female. He's not very good at the female fa uh, faces either. He can't draw them um, very um, feminine and um, and pretty. However, he, 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 can, he can draw good battle scenes. He can draw the spaceships. He can draw the Millennium Falcons. I oh can't even Paul. I'm looking at the book now. Even Paul Chewbacca. He can't even draw um, Chewbacca very well. <coughs> And uh, Darth Vader, he's messed up Darth Vader's face as well. Can you believe that? I'll show you an example of Darth Vader's face. Yeah, I was saying that he's just messing up the uh, the hero's faces, but the more I look through this comic, he doesn't um, discriminate. He can't draw any bloody faces. He gets them all wrong. There goes Darth Vader. But you look at his face and um, you think, there's, there's something wrong with it. There you go, that's how he should draw the, all, all the, uh, all the uh, characters. The back to him. Then he might be able to get the faces right. That's the only way he's going to do a decent face, I think. It's unfortunate. Ryan Kelly, you can't do faces. Sorry, Dark Horse, but you know, this, is a, this is your big title. This is your flagship. This is Star Wars. Lots of people are going to be reading this one and then uh, and um, from this one jumping aboard to your, your different titles, like Darth Vader and the Ghost of Prison, which is really, really good. But um, if you've got uh, an artist like uh, what's name, Ryan Kelly um, doing the, uh, the artwork in here, it might put people off. So uh, I'd advise Dark Horse to get him off. Get him off before you lose any more um, readers and any more potential readers as well. He's not doing a good job. Oh, the front cover. Look at his faces on the front cover. Uh, that's not Kelly. That's another artist. That's the guy called David Michael Beck. Uh, I don't know if he went to the same school as Kelly because he can't draw faces either. That cover is one of the worst I've seen in a while. Uh, the background, there is no background. Uh, the faces, um, they're not showing any emotion. And they, they're having um, lasers fired at them. They're in the middle of battle. Uh, it looks like they're, I don't know, it looks like they're doing a bit of sunbathing. It's just, it's just not good. It's just bad, bad, bad. But anyway, enough moaning. <coughs> I'll talk about the actual comic. Uh, cause the, cause obviously, because it's... Um, the man Brian Wood writing the book. It's a good book, and this one's it's full of action, full of action scenes. Now we've got um, four different stories going on, so it's not one main plot. It's um, it's four different things with um, different characters. You've got Wedge and Luke Skywalker, the badly born Luke Skywalker. They've been taken prisoner aboard a um, a, a Devastator, like an Imperial um, spaceship. Um, they've been caught uh, deliberately. The, the plan is for for Luke and, and Wedge to put a um, like a tracking beacon. On the on the uh, Imperial um, Devastator, so again get a bit of information about what the uh, Empire is up to. <laughs> they need to uh, have a few words with President Obama, don't they? Um, he he's a, seems to be the expert at the moment on tracking absolutely everything that you do. 
Yeah, so Luke Skywalker needs to send an email to President Obama asking him for advice on how to track everything. Anyway, uh, number two, the second block, uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca, and uh, this hot blonde, a uh, hot, sorry, not, not blonde, hot blue-haired girl, blue hair's even better than blonde in my opinion, and uh, versus Boba Fett in a space battle, so you've got the Millennium Falcon versus Slave One in a space battle. Now, I won't do any spoilers, just get the comic, it's worth it just for that, even if the face is sucked. You'll get the dream match of the Falcon uh, versus Slave One. Uh, number three, you've got Princess Leia, who's um, fame independent. She's a, uh, a pilot in, in this book, and she's buggering off by herself, having little adventures, um, parking a ship on a, a derelict spaceship uh, with an old man who's alone with his thoughts. So, um, what will happen there, and um, who's this old man? Is he, is he a character that's uh, perhaps we are familiar with um, from the from the movies? Um, something to look forward to in the, in the next issues. And then we've got Darth Vader himself, again badly drawn. Facial features, of course. Um, with his helper, Birasaya. Birasaya is on the, on the same um, star devastator as Luke Skywalker. And the issue there is um, she might be able to find out that Luke Skywalker was there and then um, relay the information back to Darth Vader. But we don't know where that's going to go yet. So, and again, as I don't want to do spoilers, I won't go into too much information about where that goes. But that, that's quite interesting plot development there. Right, sir, I'll just go through uh, a few um, conclusions and what I thought of the uh, the book as a whole. I said, um, Han Solo is really cool, but then again, he's really cool in the movies as well, isn't he? He's just like your, you know, your man's man. He's uh, the sort of guy you want to be if you're a kid. That's what, that's what Han Solo is, and and that's uh, played by uh, Flame with really well in, in this book. Uh, Luke Skywalker looks like a horse. Well, I, I've already mentioned that that before, so I won't keep going on about that. Oh, one good thing about the uh, the artwork, the colours. Uh, I really love the colours. The uh, the guy who did the colours, his name is uh, I'm gonna give him credit, Gabe Altabe. Gabe Altabe. Very good uh, use of the colours here. Very very, very colourful. And it just stands out. You don't normally um, say anything about the colours, do you? Unless they're very good or very very bad. And uh, in this book, they're they're very good. Yeah, and um, it's action packed. Uh, of course, um, lots of different um, characters having different um, battle situations. Apart from um, Princess Leia, that's more of a um, uh, relaxed storyline there. But who you knows, she might be flying into danger so that could explode as well. Of course, the, uh, the big issue with this book is that um, it's, it's involving lots of characters that we already know what happens to them. So it's not like we're going to see Han Solo fighting um, uh, Boba Fett and it, there's not going to be any tension there. We're not going to think, oh no, is Han Solo going to be killed or is Boba Fett going to be killed? We know what's going to happen. So. Um, what they need to do really um, is to start introducing some of the um, the other characters, like this this um, blue haired girl who's with um, Han Solo. I, I forget the name, but that's what they need to do. They need to introduce uh, a few more characters in, into the storyline. Obviously, it's a it's a difficult thing for Brian Wood to do because there are lots of people reading this book to see um, the old characters, the characters that they they grew up with. You know, like me, who grew up in the 70s with Han Solo and Luke Skywalker. I mean, that's why they're reading the book. They want to see these old characters again. But again, you've got problems. You already know what happens to them. Now, this book's um, set um, just after the uh, the first Star Wars movie, I think. So you, you know what's going to happen to the characters. So it uh, loses an element um, in, the, in the storytelling there. But um, I, I read the, read the um, couple of the uh, letters at the end of this issue, and uh, they they recognise that problem. So they're going to slowly like introduce some some new characters in, in, into the story as it goes on. This is um, issue number eight, and it's got plenty of. Um, uh, Plenty of petrol left in the tank, so it's, it's, it's not going to, you know, it's not like it ends at issue 10. It's going to keep on going, so I'm sure that's what they'll do as the book uh, progresses. Introduce more characters and maybe um, phase out some of the older ones because we already know their stories. Okay, so overall, I'll give this book a, uh, a 7 out of 10. It would be a, a strong 8 out of 10 because there's lots of um, really good um, action scenes in there. It's, it's very exciting, lots of things are going on, it's never boring. That's one thing I can say about this book, it, it, it's never boring. Uh, unfortunately, um, the artwork, um, um, I've got a knock off a point for that. So it would be an 8 out of 10, uh, but I'll bring it down to a 7 out of 10 because uh, Mr. Ryan Kelly and his um, facials that look like horses, not good, especially when you're drawing heroes who are supposed to look, um, well, heroic. That's what hero is. Hang on, um, that's the end of my review, but if um, you want to hang on for a second, I've just been looking through some of my old CDs. And I, I, I found some music, which is absolutely fantastic, which I haven't played for a long time. I just want to give you a quick um, a minute burst here. And I'll, I'll put a link to the, um, the artist in the, in, the, in the comment section. The band called Carcass. Hang on. Let's see if I can put play here.
No Love Lost by the Carcass. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link. Uh, they're an old English band, um, um, metal band. Uh, really good stuff. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my headphones on and I'm going to go for a run in my local forest, uh, which is the scene of um, battles which stretch back thousands of years. So that, that's what Warshack does um, after he's um, finished video, uh, video reviews on YouTube. Sticks his headphones on, uh, listens to mad music like Carcass whilst running through a forest, um, which is also the uh, the, uh, the setting scene, the scene of, a, of ancient battles thousands of years in the past. Uh, Viking warriors used to uh, fight uh, like Saxon and uh, Angles and all the, uh, the the tribes that used to make up um, what is now on current day England. Anyway, that's the end of my review. That's a bit long, wasn't it? Um, hope you enjoyed the music. Um, back to the comic again. Uh, Star Wars. Number eight, uh, seven out of ten because uh, the uh, the sucky artist, unfortunately. Okay, so yeah.